am Shauna, this is Shauna's World. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where I focus on living well physically, mentally and spiritually. I am very excited about the video I'm making today because I'm going to be looking ahead to 2022 and the rest of the year and all of my goals and intentions and what I want to achieve. So I did this last year and I just made a video reviewing my 2021 goals which I will link but I always think it's so important to start out the year knowing what I want from the year because if you don't have a plan or you don't know what you want it to be it's really easy just to drift and let the year pass you by and you know that's okay too if that's a priority if you just need a year of rest and a year of not having goals that's okay too I've done that some years when I've just been struggling with my mental health and goals haven't been such a priority but this year I want to have a big year and I've chosen a word for the year and that word is growth. I really want to seek out growth this year. Personal growth, professional growth, spiritual growth, emotional growth, relational growth is all important to me. So let's make that happen in 2022. So last year when I set out my goals, I had eight core goals and a few other intentions. This year is a bit more all over the place just because last year's goals, some of them were quite big goals that were time consuming, like doing my breathwork facilitator training. Whereas this year, I just have a few more things and a lot of them are kind of smaller goals or not gonna take up so much time so I can fit a lot more in. Firstly, I just said that I have goals that aren't gonna take up as much time this year. And then I realized the first goal I'm gonna set is gonna take literally two months. But obviously mentioned in a past video about my sabbatical, and um, my ultimate goal for this year is to hike the Israel National Trail. So over a thousand kilometers. And if all goes to plan with COVID, I'm gonna be going in the autumn and hiking for two months through the entire country. So that's a pretty big goal and a pretty scary one but I think I can make it happen. Then I have a couple of other physical goals. So I really want this to be the year I get down below my 5K PB again. So after a long hiatus from running about 10 years, well, it was 2013 I started, was it 2013? Yeah, 2013 I started running again after a long time and I got my all time 5K PB of 23 minutes and 32 seconds and I've never got down below that again. And I guess I'm getting older and it's a lot harder to run fast, but I'm really determined to get down below that this year. 2021, I did get down from, I'd, I'd been back around 27, 28 minutes and I did a park run. My fastest park run was 25 minutes and 10 seconds, which I was really pleased with because I hadn't even been close to 25 minutes in a long time, but it's still a long way to go over such a short distance to get down below 23, 32. We can make it happen, hopefully. Well, it may not be that congruent with my other running goal this year, which is to run an ultra marathon. So the plan is to do the Thames Path 50 kilometer ultra, which is in September, just before I go to Israel, probably. And my mum and stepdad are doing that race. My stepdad did it last year and it sounded fantastic. It'll go right past my boat on the river and just good atmosphere and it's flat, which is great for a first ultra. And I really want to give it a try, but I know that an ultra, particularly if you run the whole thing, takes a lot of training. And I don't know if I'm up to that, but I am okay with walking some of it or a lot of it. Um, it's a really laid back event. Um, a lot of people do it for charity. Um, so I can walk if I'm not trained up enough to run, but I've started or I'm starting this month working with a running coach. Um, to work both on the 5k times and the ultra marathon and he said that it definitely is doable to train for both at the same time although it might be after the ultra that i hit the 5k time but he said that speed training is still important while you're ultra training so that's good to know and i'm really looking forward to starting to train with him it's called queer runnings and, and it's an all queer virtual running club and um, so it'll be nice to be with some like-minded people and there's online strength and conditioning and yoga and socials so yeah should be fun and then a big goal i had for this year is to work on my creativity and cultivating creativity again and i've actually signed up to an acting course which starts in about a week i loved acting so much when i was younger it was the thing i was most passionate about and 
did drama as my degree but I stopped acting it was kind of more about the theory and you know I just wasn't in a good place mentally and I stopped focusing on my creativity and it just hasn't been a priority since um, but I think I really want to do this course partly just to do something for the sake of fun all of my all of my hobbies at the moment I kind of have goals and intentions and and you know wanting to monetize things and make it into a big thing but I just want to do something for the love and fun of doing it and I love acting I just want to play around be silly in a class full of people with similar interests and I'm so excited about starting that and also quite nervous it's at the Rose Theatre in Kingston called the Rose Players sounds very wonderful and my best friend's doing it with me um, so yeah really looking forward to that and then I also have a couple of goals around YouTube so I'd really love 2022 to be the year I get monetized on YouTube which means getting to a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time I believe I'm on 230 something subscribers at the moment so it's still quite a long way to go but it is moving a bit quicker than it was at the beginning and I know once a channel gains traction it can happen really fast I know I'm not making videos enough and I really want to pick that up but yeah I would really love to work on getting monetized this year and it's not even about the money it's more that I just kind of see getting monetized as the first step to success in YouTube and kind of being taken seriously and that maybe my channel could be going somewhere so I don't know if that will happen this year but I really want to work on making it happen and then I also wanted to have a YouTube goal around number of videos that I've made. Last year I set a goal of 20. This year I want to set a goal between 20 and 50 because 20 wasn't challenging enough last year. But this year is a busy year and all the other goals I've got, I don't know how much time I'm going to be able to dedicate to making videos. And last year I had the lockdown where I was just blitzing them out and that's hopefully not going to happen this year although it'd be great for YouTube if it did also because I'm going to go be going to Israel for two months in the autumn I am going to be making videos while I'm there I'm going to film throughout the trail but I'm not going to have probably got them edited and uploaded until a long time after because I'm not going to be able to do it on the go so I feel like I'm going to say between 20 and 40 videos and that means if I get to 20, I still can push, I'll still have that impetus to push for the 40, but I'm also not gonna push myself so hard that I burn out too much or I'm not gonna be able to achieve it. Then another goal I have for this year is to run breathwork sessions at at least two festivals. So that's kind of a direction I'd like to go with breathwork is to take it to festivals and take it out to people more widely. I really like facilitating breath work with people who've never done it before and introducing it to people and getting it in their lives because it's so powerful, I really believe in it. And I, li I like doing it with people who are really experienced as well and really know the benefits. But there's something just, I get such a good feeling out of introducing it to people who've never done it before. I love festivals as well, I love being there and um, leading breathwork sessions is a great way to reach that i'm also you know i also would consider kind of retreats and events and things like that that type of thing so i did one last year at the love her wild weekend which is just a small weekend but i loved it it was my favorite breathwork experience to date and yeah i just want to do more of that so i've already pitched one event and then a lot of festivals are opening up for pitches at the start of this year so i'm keeping an eye on their website and i'm going to send out pitches to offer my services and then another breathwork goal i have is to start running a monthly online session that people can join and also a monthly in-person session so i'd be doing doing sessions every two weeks and i feel like that's manageable around my four day a week job without kind of burning me out the in-person ones kind of i'm more concerned about because it's a lot harder to market i don't know a lot of people in my area you also have to consider paying for a venue and booking it when so many people book these sessions last minute you don't know if you're going to recoup the money um, but I actually would quite like to run some sessions outside with some nature connection but that's obviously weather dependent so I'm just looking at that I'm going to try and start the online sessions relatively soon but I probably won't get to start 
the in-person sessions maybe till the weather's a bit nicer and I start doing outdoor ones. I'm gonna see how it goes but that is a priority for this year to make a consistent thing of offering breathwork sessions. And then another goal I have, I really want to raise money for charity for when I do the Israel National Trail and I've been looking at charities I want to do this for but I think I want to do it raising money for LGBTQIA plus refugees because they're some of the most stigmatized people and um, being asexual and queer myself I you know it could be me if I was born somewhere else so that feels really close to my heart um, I'm looking at a charity called Rainbow Migration but not 100% sure yet but then also it's tricky because I don't want to get a donation page up and going too soon because I don't know if everything's going to be able to go ahead with the hike with COVID but I also know the sooner I do it the more I can promote it and the more I'm going to be able to raise overall so we'll see. And then I also have a couple of financial goals for 2022. The main one is by the time I go on sabbatical in I think around October, I want to have saved around £18,000 for my sabbatical. So that is because it's high um, and it, it's probably more than I need, but that's because I'm going to have to cover all my expenses for kind of back home. I have a mortgage on a flat that I rent out. I've got my mooring fees for my boat and all my kind of regular bills, which I might not be able to cancel. Um, and then I'll also be paying for travels, flights, and you know doing things while I'm away on my sabbatical and then on top of that I also want to save at least £2,500 in my emergency fund which is for contingencies if anything goes wrong and that's actually going to be quite challenging because I've got a few expenses I think are coming up I have to get new batteries for my boat which are quite pricey but I have, have been I am being overly generous in saving for my sabbatical so I will be able to dip into that and be a bit more frugal on my sabbatical if I need to um, so it should be okay but yeah that feels like big saving goals and it's more than I've ever had in my life ever before so um, that's all the difference from how I've learned to budget that's made such a difference from starting budgeting in the first lockdown, paying off my credit card. And yeah, I've really just learned how to not spend beyond my means and living on the boat, I'm able to save quite a lot. So yeah, really pleased with that. And then spiritual goals for 2022. The big one I wanna do is a Vipassana retreat, which is, oh, it's so muddy here. Um, it's a 10 day, meditation well it's it's a silent retreat um and it's 10 days you meditate for around 10 hours a day you're in silence the whole time you can in instances talk to the teachers but you can't talk to the other participants you can ask questions about your practice but that is it and you're kind of yeah meditating all day meditative eating and um you can't exercise you can't read you can't write you can't do anything but meditate basically for 10 days but vipassana means kind of seeing things as they are and it's supposed to be really good for kind of alleviating suffering a really good way of understanding yourself and um, it's something i've wanted to do for a long time but i have been a bit scared to be honest because it's very intense um, i've applied for my place in the spring but they are very strict about who they take on and they're quite cautious around people with mental illness and I put forward my case and said you know I'm doing really well mentally and I haven't ha haven't been unwell in quite a long time and shared my experience so hopefully they'll accept me if they don't I will look at another kind of Buddhist retreat that's quite intense but it nothing's as intense as Vipassana from my understanding so fingers crossed I can do that it would mean so much to me and I think it'd be a really important part of my spiritual journey and then other spiritual goals for this year are just to maintain my daily practices, meditation, breath work, and journaling. And I feel like that's gonna happen naturally. I really enjoy doing those things, um, but just setting it as an intention to keep that going. And then I have some other intentions for daily habits I wanna cultivate. So one of the biggest things that I struggle with 
in life and it sounds really small but it does really impact me is I really struggle with keeping things clean and tidy and kind of looking after my space and the boat is just really it's so small it's really hard to clean and keep tidy and keep on top of things and I thought being in a small, small space would make it easier but actually it's harder because when you're cleaning you can't really move things to other places and I'm just quite disorganized I'm quite scatty and I let things build up so my intention for this year is to at least make my bed every day and to at least wash up every day and to pick up clothes and bits and bobs on the floor every day so I will do obviously other deep cleaning and things when I get a chance but just doing those basic things I think I'll just keep it in a much nicer state because sometimes I don't and then it just feels really chaotic and I end up getting re really miserable because it gets to a point where it feels insurmountable and I just feel very overwhelmed with the state of my living space and then mental goals for this year again I'm setting the intention of reading or listening to 50 or more audiobooks or books. Um, I really enjoyed that last year. And I actually think this year, I'm gonna try and read a bit more fiction again. I, have, I used to love fiction and I haven't been consuming it for a long time because there's something that I often am more likely to feel triggered by fiction books. Often they go to quite dark places and I just find them a bit hard but I feel like I'm in a good place and I can start to play with some fiction books and you know I'll stick to certain genres and you know recommendations but it's something that I do want to consider going back to. I still will read lots of non-fiction and autobiographies but yeah going to be exploring a bit of fiction. And then the final thing I think is that I want to take one day a week off of social media and that's actually really hard for me um, because I use social media and my phone and the internet as a kind of coping mechanism. I notice a lot of the same behaviours in how I approach scrolling on the internet as how I used to be when I smoked cigarettes. Um, I kind of, when I feel anxious, I just pick up my phone and scroll instead of sitting with the feelings. And it's actually something that's really holding me back from getting things done. And yeah, it's not, it's not good for the soul. Now it is important for me that I am on social media because I'm trying to build an online brand so I can't get rid of it altogether and I do enjoy it as well. I enjoy creating content, I enjoy connecting with people. Um, so I'm not ready to give it up but I want to take one day a week off social media and maybe kind of, if it's feasible, switching my phone off altogether, which isn't always possible because say if you go for a walk you might need to get directions or whatever but it is something I really want to be a lot more mindful about my phone usage because between that, my overusage of the phone and my tidiness and cleanliness, those are the things that hold me back and stress me out the most at the moment. So I really want to work on that this year. So I think that is everything. I'm really, it's quite, it's quite the list of goals. It's quite a lot that I want to do. A lot of them are kind of daily habits and intentions. So not hugely time consuming. And then there's some bigger ones like the ultra marathon, like the breathwork stuff, like of course the Israel national trail. And I feel like, I feel like I probably won't make everything happen or not exactly but I feel like I've got to aim high and shoot for all the things I wanna do. And if some of them roll over into 2023, that's okay. But I wanna set these as intentions now and really work towards making them happen. So yeah, I'm excited about how this year's gonna go. I feel like I've got big plans, big intentions, 